Hi everyone, and welcome back to Cardiac Reader for Teens. For those of you who don't know, Cardiac Reader for Teens is a place where teens can come together with other teens to learn about spiritist teachings and topics in a way that makes more sense to us and is more relatable to us as teenagers in today's society. As you all know from um, the past shows that we've been doing, we've spent over two years now um, reading the spirits book together page by page, question by question, and not to get a full understanding of it because we know that we're we're not going to fully understand this book one time through we're not going to fully understand it two times through five times through ten times through every time we read this we'll always learn something new something else will apply to us so we're not reading this to be like okay we've read it let's put it away but we're reading it to get a basic understanding for right now so that we can continue to learn off that and build off that and grow off that even if it's with these same questions again and learn more from that or from a different topic that we can relate oh yeah remember when we learned that in the spirits book for the past few weeks for the past few weeks now we've been reading through the conclusion section and although people might think oh we've reached the end of the book we've reached the end of the questions it's important to read the, the conclusion because they're kind of putting some some added info some some summarization that we didn't get just in the questions so it is important for us to read the conclusion because they brought new new information for us in there. So let's get right to where we left off, halfway through section 8 of the conclusion. In the same manner that the invention of the microscope reveals an infinitely small world, the existence of which was unsuspected until then. Similarly, the telescope reveals thousands of worlds and existences which of which we never suspect, suspected. Spirit communication today are, are revealing the existence of an invisible world surrounding us, a world that is incessantly in contact with us, and that takes part in everything we do, completely unbeknownst to us. Soon, the existence of that world, which is the ultimate destiny, destiny for all of us, will be as indisputable as the existence of both the microscopic world and the infinity of the universe. Is the revelation of a new world worth nothing? Is the introduction of the mysteries to, of life beyond the grave worthless? Granted, it is, it is also true that these revelations, if they can be called such, conflict with certain established notions that we had. But haven't all great scientific discoveries changed and even resided ideas that were fully accepted worldwide? Were our pride not forced to yield to evidence? The same will happen with spiritism, which will soon assume its place among the other branches of human knowledge. So here they're saying that when someone invented the microscope, that opened up a whole new world, right? That opened a world of little bacteria that we had no idea about, about little cells. No one could see those little things. When you look at your hand, you don't see anything. So no one could ever imagine this little world that's there on your hands, on everything that we touch, everything that's around us. And then they said the telescope. The telescope, that opened up the universe to us, right? Because before we just saw these little shiny things in the sky. And now we were able to see them more clearly and understand more of the concept of this universe that goes on for infinity, right? The, how far away they're, um, it, how far away the light is. It's not as strong when we see it. So we've learned so much about how big the universe is from a telescope, and that created a whole new world, right? So they're saying the same thing here. Spiritism is bringing a whole new world to us too, of um, an invisible world that we're not aware of usually, that we we don't just see, right? Just like the bacteria or just like the universe. We don't just see that. But with special knowledge and assistance, like the Spirits book, we can see that. We can come to understand that. And then it says, well, yeah, some people are going to have thoughts against it, but think of any great scientific discovery. There's always thought, thoughts against it until everyone has to be like, okay, well, even though I'm being stubborn right now, I know that that's right. Like when people thought for the long time that the world was flat, right? People were convinced that the world was just flat and then that was it. But 
if the world was, then finally they figured out that, okay, the world's not flat, that it's, it's like a sphere, right? An ellipse. And then we figured that out. Some people, that went against everything they believed in, right? Because up until this point, they were thinking the world's flat, the world's flat, the world's flat. And now they're saying, oh, nope, it's not flat. It's like a sphere. And so now people are like, oh my goodness. And they don't want to change their views, but eventually they have to see the evidence. They have to see the facts that it's not about my opinion, but what is true. So they're saying the same thing here will happen with spiritism. Eventually, people will, even though they might be against it, they can't go against the evidence in which they will be seeing and hearing about it. And then they continue. Our communications with the beginnings of the world beyond the grave enables us to see and understand our future life. They give us a taste of both the joys and sorrows that awaits us, depending on our merits and bring spiritualism back to those who have reduced humanity to the state of an organized machine. We are therefore justified in assertion in asserting the fact the facts of spiritism have effectively killed materialism. Had spiritism done nothing more than this, it would be entitled to recognition, but it has done much more because it has showed the inevitable results of wrongdoings and consequently, the necessity of goodness. The number of people spiritism has brought back to a propensity of goodness, whose bad inclinations were neutralized, and whom it turned away from wrongdoing, is already larger than assumed, and continues to grow every day. The future is a fact, the reality of which is felt and understood when we see and hear those who have left us mourning or celebrating what they did when they were on earth. It is no longer vague or mere hope. Everyone who witnesses these communications begins to reflect and feel the need for self-examination, self-judgment, and self-improvement. So here they're saying that spiritism is opening up a whole new world to us, right? And they're saying if spiritism does nothing for a person, at least it makes them think more spiritually than just the material things, right? At least they realize, okay, maybe these material things aren't the most important thing. And even if that's all they learned, that's still amazing, right? That's still such a big accomplishment because right now we're so materialistic and we're so caught up on what we have, um, what we have, right? These goods that are just plastic that don't really matter. So if spiritism does nothing, at least it has helped the person to become more more spiritual right but that's not the case it hasn't done just that it has done so much more and even if people don't actively realize it it helps us to make better decisions because we know that if i do something wrong it doesn't matter if i get away with it now because eventually it's going to catch up with me right eventually i'm going to face the consequence for that it doesn't matter if it's now or the next life and because sometimes we know people or sometimes we know people who are going through so much and you think how is that fair that these people are going through so much but then we realize okay there's some reason that they're there's some reason that they have to go through that right to learn to grow from that experience and that doesn't mean we just leave them alone but that means that we shouldn't judge them because we probably have the same or worse things to go through too so we should just lend a helping hand to each other so spiritism also helps us to realize this world around us and be more conscious about ourselves and about others in a good way right and what are we doing good and i can't do something wrong because eventually it's going to catch up with me and sometimes we see people who seem to get away with everything but eventually that's also going to catch up with them right so we know that we should just focus on ourselves and do the good things right and they're saying spiritism has helped people to do good things right to do goodness if they were doing bad habits, they at least, maybe they're not doing good things, but at least they're not doing those bad things anymore. Or they turned away from doing something wrong, right? They had the option, they turned away from it. So that's, spiritism has affected many, many people in that way already, and it is not even that well known. So imagine what will happen when more people are aware of this. And again, we know we can't look at someone else's problems and fix those for them, but look at ourselves because we all have problems right if we're on earth we're not highly evolved we need to work on a lot of things within us so here it says it helps us feel self-examination self-judgment and self-improvement right so we look at ourselves we judge ourselves and we realize what we need to improve in ourselves 
And now we're on to the last section, section 9 of the, spirits, of the conclusion of the Spirits book. Opponents of Spiritism have used the differences of opinions among Spiritists on certain doctrinal points as weapons against it. It is not surprising that, at the beginning of a new science, when the preliminary observations are still incomplete, the subject is analyzed from different perspectives and that contradictory theories are then put forward. Nonetheless, as, through, as thorough study of the facts in question have already deflated three-fourths of such theories, starting with that which attributes all spirit communications to bad spirits as though it were possible for God to send, impossible for God to send good spirits. This theory is absurd because it contradicts the facts and blasphemous because it denies God's power and goodness. The spirits have always advised us not to worry about the difference of opinion existing among spiritists, assuring us that harmony will eventually reign. Now we see that this harmony, with respect to most of the points at issue, have already been established, and that the remaining conflicting opinions are disappearing day by day. To the question, while awaiting the establishment of harmony, upon what basis can an impartial and fair-minded individual form an opinion regarding the relative merit of the various theories suggested by the spirits. The following reply was given. So before we re read the reply to that question, here they're saying that spiritism, spiritists often have different ideas, especially right in the beginning, right? Because it's new. So people, although they were getting the same understanding, they kind of made their own theories about it. So they're saying, um, people that are against spiritism, they'll say, oh, but you have this theory, but that person has this theory. And it's because it's a relatively new thing, right? When something's new, people have different thoughts about it, different theories. But eventually, it's all going to come down to the same principle, right? The same doctrine. But by us having these concrete studies, right? Like once they made the spirits book and they made the other books, we've been getting a concrete definition of spiritism. So they're saying three-fourths of these theories are already gone because now we've kind of unified it, we've kind of cleared up some miscommunications, some different theories. So they're saying three-fourths of it is already gone. But the one-fourth of, like, theories that are a little bit different about spiritism that might not exactly be true, that is just someone else's opinion. And they're saying don't worry too much about that because eventually everyone will get on the same page. And if someone, if that's their way that they're going to start learning spiritism at first, right? If they, if they're just a little bit off, we just let them grow and then we fix, and then as they go learning more, they'll go fixing their opinions, right? So they're saying, don't worry about that. It will, harmony is eventually going to reign, right? They're saying, the spirits tell us that harmony is going to reign. But then they're saying, they're giving us an, they gave us an example of one of these theories that happened. So People thought that any communication with spirits would be bad spirits. And because it was impossible for God to send good spirits. So we're like, okay, that's a theory. But then you start looking more into spiritism and you think, okay, well, that can't be, that can't be it because that means that God isn't powerful and God isn't good if he's only sending bad and he has no power to send good spirits, right? So from that, now we realize, okay, maybe that one's not true. And then we move on. So... Um, but again, they said, don't worry, because eventually harmony will come together, right? And now we get to this question. So someone, someone asked, while waiting for the establishment of harmony, so they're saying, okay, so eventually we're going to have harmony. Eventually we're, go we're all going to be on the same page of what spiritism is. But until then, while we're waiting, what, what can a, a fair-minded individual form an opinion about? So... So, like, until we get to that harmony that everyone's on the same page, what should an individual, what's their ideal outlook of spiritism? And they got the following reply. The purest light is not obscured by any cloud. The most precious diamond is the one that is flawless. Judge the spirits based on the purity, the purity of their teachings. Do not forget that there are many who have not yet freed themselves of their earthly ideas. Learn to distinguish them by their language. Judge them by the sum total of what they say. See whether they, there is a logical sequence in their ideas. Verify that nothing betrays ignorance, pride, or malice. 
Ultimately, if their communications always bear the stamp of wisdom, it is proof of true superiority. If errors did not exist in your world, it would be perfect, but it is far from being so. You still have to learn to distinguish error from truth and need experience to exercise your judgment in order to advance. Harmony is achieved when good is not mixed with inequity, when people rally spontaneously to that principle because they consider it to be the truth. So here they're saying is that we have to learn how to distinguish good and bad, right? Because we know that we're not in a perfect world. We are we are far from being in that, that pure state of spirit. So we know that it's not going to be perfect. There's not going to be only good spirits. So we need to learn to distinguish it for ourselves. Distinguish what someone's saying if or what the spirit's saying. If they're giving wisdom, if they're following their thoughts, if they're talking like they're elevated, then okay, right? But if sometimes their ideas kind of get mixed or if sometimes they they aren't using the right vocabulary or they say something with ignorance, pride, or malice, then we can see that it's not a, a superior spirit. So it's up to us and we're just going to need to practice, right? A spirit is a new thing. We're just going to need to practice to have these distinguishments. You can't just instantly know something without ever having tried it or having going through it. So we just need to learn and they're saying harmony is going to come when people when people are considering it to be the truth and they're not um, and they're agreeing with spiritism. Harmony will come. But they're saying just hold on until then, right? Because we know we're far from imperfect in a lot of things. So we just got to do our best and hopefully other people will do their best and then we'll all improve. And then they continue. Moreover, never mind a few distant who ob- objections are more in the form than in depth. Observe the fundamental principles are the same everywhere, and should unite you all in a common bond, the love of God, the practice of goodness. Regardless of the method of progression and the normal conditions of your future existence, the ultimate goal is still the same, to do right, and there are not two ways of doing it. So here they're saying there's going to be people, again, who are going to go against spiritism. But think about the fundamental principles in all religions, in all cultures. It's to love God, right? The love of God. And to practice goodness. There's not different ways to do good things. Well, there's different ways that we can perform goodness. But to be good, there's just one way to be good, right? So we're, if we're all being good, if we're all trying to do our best then we should all be united. We should all have that in common, right? Because they're saying there's not two ways of of doing something right, right? There's the right way. So as long as we're doing the right way of things, then we are in harmony. Despite what names might be on what we believe in, there are commonalities, right? There are common bonds. And then they continue. There may be differences of opinions among spiritists about a few theoretical points. However, All of them agree on the fundamental principles. Harmony already exists among them, with the exception of a very small number of people who do not yet admit the participation of spirits in the manifestations. They attribute them to either purely physical causes, which contradicts the fundamental spiritist assertion that every intelligent effect must have an intelligent cause, or to the reflection of our own thought which is disproved by that fact. The other points are merely secondary and have nothing to do with the essential core. So there may be schools that seek to illuminate the still controversial parts of science, but there must not be rival sects. Opposition should only exist between those who desire good and those who desire or do bad. A person who sincerely adopts the moral principles established by spiritism can neither desire wickedness nor wish ill upon his or her neighbor, regardless of opinion. If any school of thought is wrong, enlightenment will come soon enough if it is practitioners want it honestly without clutching to the preconceived notions. In the meantime, everyone has a common bond that should unite all in the same sentiment. They have they all have a common goal, and the road traveled is irrelevant, provided it leads to the same destination. No one should, att- should attempt to force their own opinions upon others, 
whether pertaining to physical or moral constraints, and anyone who would hurl insults or curse at another would clearly be in the wrong. Obviously, and moder moderation does more to ensure obviously acting under the influence of bad spirits. Reason is the best argument, and moderation does more to ensure the triumph of the truth that attacks tainted by envy and jealousy. Good spirits exhort us to strive to live in harmony and to learn to love our neighbors, and nothing malicious or uncharitable can ever come from a pure source. In this regard, and as fitting conclusion to this book, we share the following words from the spirit of St. Augustine. So here, they're summing up that people are going to have different points of view, even spiritists are going to have different points of view. But again, all that matters is that we are following the path of good, that we're trying to do good things, right? As long as we have good intents and we're trying to do the good, then it doesn't matter what path we're taking to get there, right? What path it takes us to get to perfection, as long as we're following that path of good. And if someone has a little idea wrong, that will be corrected along the way, right? Spiritists will come and enlighten them to, to kind of change their way and say, oh, okay, you have this idea, but it's a little bit wrong. Let me guide you the right way. But if not, it's okay as long as they're practicing good, right? It comes down to that fundamental thing that as long as we're doing good, it doesn't matter how we're getting there, right? And we don't want to force our opinions on other people. We don't want to force spiritism on everyone and say, you have to believe this. But we can share our thoughts and try and share spiritism, but not force people. They'll come to it at their own time, right? The best we can do is to read spiritism, to study it, and to try and do the best that we can. And now to finish up with this last quote from St. Augustine. Human beings have torn one another to shreds for long enough, cursing each other in the name of a peaceful and merciful God, whom they insult by committing such a sacrilege. Spiritism is the link that will one day form a bond between them by showing what is truth and what is error. However, there will still be scribes and Pharisees who will reject it for a very long time, exactly as they rejected Christ. Who would like to know what spirits influence the various groups dividing the current inhabitants of this world? Judge them by their deeds and principles. Good spirits never incite evil. They never advise or condone murder and violence. They never stimulate hatred, thirst for wealth and honors or greed for earthly possessions. Those who are kind, humane, and compassionate to all are not only friends of good spirits, but Jesus as well, because they are following the road that he has shown will lead to him. So there we are to wrap up the Spirit's book. Um, the Spirit St. Augustine telling us one more time that it doesn't matter in what forms we're doing it, but just the people who are doing good, right? Being kind, humane, compassionate, those are spirits that are not only going to have these good spirits that are not only going to evolve, but they're also going to, um, to have the guidance of Jesus, right? Because Jesus showed the path to, that leads to him, right? And it's doing goodness. So it doesn't matter in which ways we're doing that. It doesn't matter what religions are doing that, what, what people are doing that. But what matters, what it comes down to, what matters is the good that we do. So that's the most important thing to keep in our minds all the time. And that is officially the end of the Spirits book. So we have read through all 119 questions and the comments and Alan Kardec's comments and the conclusions and extra parts that have been in the book. And before we leave off today, I'd like to read our message from the Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Picone for today's date, February 19th. This one's titled, Kind Words. One kind word can warm three winter months. It's easy to say something nice, and even easier to neglect to do so. We glow when someone tells us how much they appreciate something we've done, even if what we've done is as inconsequitable as holding open a door or picking up litter. But in our busy daily rush, we don't always think to pass such kindness on to others. I will offer kind words to others as often as I can. So next week, we're going to start off with something new. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, any topics you want to talk about more that were confusing, 
feel free to email me at cardiograderforteens at gmail.com and I'll get back to you right away. I'm Bia and this has been Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening. This has been Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>